everyone, it's Jack from cultaholic.com and the UK is in lock down, which is surreal, it's very strange, but never fear, because despite that, we do have a lot of wrestling news to talk about from all over the world of wrestling. Some of it regarding WrestleMania, some of it regarding shows that have been cancelled in the wrestling world, some of it regarding what's going on on AEW Dynamite this week. So, just stay tuned in and we'll take a look at those lovely headlines. Don't panic, don't panic, it's all fine. First of all, it seems as though John Cena versus The Fiend at WrestleMania is set to get special treatment. Next up, a unique stipulation has been added to Undertaker versus AJ Styles. And finally, a title match has been set for this week's AEW Dynamite, but it may not be for the title you think. So first of all, let's talk about that big John Cena versus Bray Wyatt, The Fiend Bray Wyatt match at WrestleMania. We'd already heard about how certain parts of WrestleMania this year could take place in other locations apart from the Performance Center, but now it seems as though we've really singled out a match that is definitely said to have such special treatment, at least if these reports are to be believed. This report comes courtesy of Gorilla Position. Check them out if you haven't already, they are fantastic. And the tweet that they sent out last night reads, apparently John Cena versus The Fiend at WrestleMania will get a full-blown movie treatment with a unique look and feel. Rumors suggest a match shot on a closed set in a warehouse, like House of Horrors. As long as there's no projections or cockroaches, then Gorilla Position are happy with that. But would you be happy with that? Let me know in the comments section down below because I don't honestly know how to feel about this. Yes, if there was any match on the show that should be given the full-blown Hollywood movie treatment, then it's probably The Fiend versus John Cena because The Fiend is such a dark and eerie character. But then again, as Gorilla Position mentioned in their tweet, we have seen special effects be used and special things used for Bray Wyatt matches before, and often it hasn't worked. Not because of Bray, it's not because it's not his fault, he is still a very good wrestler, but because of, I guess, the way it was presented. It came across as quite cheesy. The whole projections thing mentioned in that tweet, of course, refers to the WrestleMania 33 match between Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton, where cockroaches and insects were projected into the ring to scare Orton, and then Orton hit an RKO and won. Like, just easily. And then of course we got shortly afterwards the House of Horrors match also mentioned in that tweet which was just something man. In fact that is today's uh, recommended viewing match. I've been doing that once in news video, that's today's one. Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt, House of Horrors match. Refresh your memory of that match and let me know what you think in the comments section down below. But then again, on the other hand, because I've been kind of negative there, I would like to say that maybe this over-the-top, closed-set Hollywood feel, if that is all to be true, maybe that would work given the very unique circumstances at the moment because, of course, uh, Wyatt versus Cena isn't just taking place on any WrestleMania. And I think if this took the place slap bang in the middle of a normal WrestleMania, then it would feel very cheesy, very campy, very weird. But I think if it's happening on this special sort of WrestleMania over two days with closed sets and no fans and everything, it's already got a bit of an eerie feel. So why not go all out with it? I guess the only way we'll be able to tell is once we actually watch it on uh, either Saturday the 4th or Sunday the 5th of April. Can't quite remember which day this match is rumored to be on, but uh, I guess it all just remains to be seen. More WrestleMania developments to talk about because last night on Monday Night Raw, AJ Styles suggested a stipulation to be added to his and Undertaker's match at WrestleMania. It was, uh, it was a confusing one. AJ said that he and Undertaker would do battle in a Boneyard match. And then there was no elaboration, so <laughs> hopefully there's some coming over the next week or two because, yeah, nobody has any idea what a Boneyard match is. My best guess is that it's some kind of PG... Well, I was going to say a PG variation of a Buried Alive match, but how do you do a PG version of a Buried Alive match? Certainly the finish is not going to be one compared to burying the other one alive, you'd like to think. Uh, but at the same time, it could be a PG variation of some kind of Falls Count Anywhere, some kind of backstage brawl, except it's uniquely contained within, I assume, a, a graveyard or a cemetery. Now, that's not confirmed or anything, that's just my own speculation, but with this recent news of John Cena versus Bray Wyatt rumored to be taking place on a closed set and being given full Hollywood treatment, I think that this match could be a prime candidate as well, especially with this Boneyard stipulation. But again, I have no idea what that means. Boneyard could mean graveyard. Is Boneyard like a biker thing as well? Could it be Undertaker going back to his American badass ways? I'm taking you to the Boneyard. Have I just made that up? Is that not what Americans do? I, please help me out. Speaking of all these potential alternative locations for various matches at WrestleMania, let's talk about something that was tweeted very recently indeed by Joshua Colson88 on Twitter, who said, WrestleMania 36 to be taped at Full Sail Live, Raw, SmackDown, all the trucks and tour buses are there currently, and then he indeed tweeted some pictures along with the tweet of 
WWE's production trucks outside of Full Sail. So what's the story here then? Well, this is unusual because of course, Raw and SmackDown at the moment are taking place at the Performance Center, but with this ongoing news rumbling along of WrestleMania taking place across various locations, maybe one of those locations is indeed Full Sail University, which is of course the regular location for weekly episodes of NXT. But then which match would it make sense to take place at Full Sail University? In my mind, the obvious answer would be Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair for that NXT Women's Championship. It's the only NXT match on the card. I think it's the only NXT match ever to take place on a WrestleMania card because usually we've got TakeOver and everything. But I think this one was going to be, yeah, this one was going to be on the card anyway, regardless of whether TakeOver took place or not. So that, that gives it an entirely sort of special feel. And I think that it might be cool to see Rhea Ripley go back to where she's the queen, whereas Charlotte goes back to where she used to be the queen. You see what kind of story I'm getting at here. So if Full Sail is indeed being used for one of the matches to take place in, I think it's most likely to be Rhea versus Charlotte. But what do you think? Now, those of you who watched SmackDown last Friday will have noticed that Paige appeared, but not in person. She gave her announcement via video, and that's because she, along with several other unnamed superstars, reportedly refused to travel to the Performance Center for SmackDown, which is an entirely understandable decision, by the way, given the ongoing global situation. This story comes from the Wrestling Observer, and Dave Meltzer himself has indeed reported that apparently WWE have been very good about this, very, very understanding, and have basically, which is, you know, again, just a damning indictment of the wrestling industry that we're praising WWE for doing something that's just decent that's just a nice and, and proper thing to do but that's the way that the wrestling business is sometimes but yes apparently WWE have been very fair in their response and said you don't want to come along totally fine we're fine with that a similar a similar response I guess to Tony Khan when he said that anybody who didn't want to turn up to AEW does not risk losing their push or their position on the roster and while this is obviously just like the common decent thing for WWE to do and the only real course of action for WWE WWE. It makes extra sense when it comes to Paige, who of course recently underwent emergency surgery and that puts her in a higher risk category than most. So she should definitely, I mean, we can totally understand why she should be staying away and indeed why anyone else would be staying away too. So well done to WWE for reacting in the correct way uh, and for, yeah, again, it's just bad that we have to report this as news when surely the wrestling industry should be a bit of a brighter place. But yes, well done to WWE for that and uh, hopefully everything can just get back to normal fairly soon. Speaking of things not quite being normal at the minute, AEW have rescheduled more shows. They confirmed that on Twitter yesterday and said that all episodes of Dynamite will be broadcast behind closed doors until at least May 13th. Refunds will be available for fans or they have the option to hold on to their ticket and use that when AEW return to those venues later on in the year. More details in just a sec. So the episodes of Dynamite that have been rearranged are the one that was set for Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania on April 22nd, one in Houston, Texas the following week, April 29th, uh, May the 6th in New Orleans, Louisiana, and also finally on May 13th in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. They will now all take place on a closed set with only essential personnel, etc, etc, the, the very thing that we're used to by now. Uh, but they, the updated dates for later on in the year are as follows. So Philadelphia has been moved to July 29th, Houston, Texas, November 4th, New Orleans, Louisiana, December 2nd, and Rio Rancho, New Mexico, December 30th. Everybody is still awaiting news on the May 23rd Double or Nothing show from Las Vegas, Nevada, but there is nothing yet that has been confirmed by AEW either way. Speaking of cancelled shows, we have a couple more to report this time from New Japan Pro Wrestling. The Sakura Genesis show, which is typically one of New Japan's, I guess, equivalent of a big four show, uh, was meant to happen on Tuesday, March 31st at Sumo Hall in Tokyo, but that has been cancelled. And also cancelled is the following Wrestling Dontaku show, which was set to take place on April 11th in Sagamihara. New Japan have released a statement reading, We deeply apologise to fans who are looking forward to these events. Ultimately, the health and safety of our fans, wrestlers and staff, as well as society Society at large is our utmost concern and we will make announcements about events scheduled after April 11th upon careful monitoring of this developing situation. And finally, I'll put this laptop down soon, I promise. Uh, Cody Rhodes has tweeted to confirm that he will be joining Tony Schiavone on commentary for AEW Dynamite this week. He said this Wednesday, I'll be joining Tony Schiavone on commentary live for AEW Dynamite. Brackets, bit cheeky from Cody there. I have a bad habit on commentary that I'll be totally leaning into and hopefully it turns into something fun for the fans watching at home. More info to come. Now, we don't know what that means for JR or Excalibur or whether this will just be for part of the show or whether Cody will be on it for all of the show. But. Uh, 
um, for now, all we know is that Tony and Cody, big Tony and Cody, will be calling the action, and that Cody has some sort of habit that he'll be possibly derailing his own show with, so that should be fun. But perhaps Cody shouldn't be so confident, because of course, he is taking on Jimmy Havoc on AEW this week, if I'm not mistaken. And Jimmy Havoc replied to that tweet saying, not if I take your tongue first, you won't be. You won't be doing commentary, which is charming from Jimmy. Uh, we'll see how that match goes, and we'll see how Cody does on commentary, either before or after this sort of this sort of war against a very nasty man. And finally, there is a title match on Dynamite this week to talk about Kenny Omega taking on Sammy Guevara. Wait a minute, Jack, hang on one sec. Kenny Omega is a tag team champion, but he's defending it against one other person. No, because remember, Kenny Omega is not just the AEW Tag Team Champion. He is also the Triple A Mega Champion, the Mega Campeon, and that title will be on the line against Sammy Guevara. Always nice to see a title from another promotion defended in a different promotion. I think that's one of those really cool little wrinkles of wrestling that happens now and again. Well, it happens all the time on the on the indies, but it happens now and again in terms of bigger promotions. Uh, also, I think that it'll be really fun in terms of styles. That they match up really well, Kenny Omega and Sammy Guevara, and they could totally just tear the house down. I think it could be fantastic. And could we see a title change? Well, I don't know. I don't know whether we could or not, because it would be a very bold decision for AAA, I guess, to book their title change in a different promotion. But then again, during such times, would that really be out of the question? Our trip, I don't know how, how many shows AAA have scheduled for the near future. And if they wanted to do a title change, I guess this would be a cool and high profile way to do it, at least for their American fans. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And remember to check out the House of Horrors match between Randall, Randall, Keith Orton and Bray Wyatt. In preparation, of course, it's like a bit of light required reading for John Cena versus The Fiend at WrestleMania 36. So yes, thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you thought about any of these stories in the comment section down below and I'll catch you in a bit.